Okay, this is lesson five. We're on activity three. We watched the video. We looked at the intro material. We're just going to run the code here um, and see uh, what it does. So we've got an exposition variable that we've assigned to 50. And then we're using that exposition variable right here. Now, what happens if we change that variable value to, let's say, 100? And if I run it, you'll notice that the exposition now is 100, so it now pushes the circle over here to an X value of 100. Any questions on that one? All right, let's go to the next. Which corner of the screen will the circle be drawn below? So it won't let you answer until you, or let you see it until you answer. So let's predict. We've got the X position at 300. What's the Y at 100? We're going to draw a circle at 300, 100. Where is that going to be? Well, if you need some help, just use your grid coordinates here and figure out where 300, 100 would be. So what corner is that going to be in? There we go. Again, now you have a drawing tab and a variables tab. We did have a math tab that had the uh, random number in it. That's gone because we're not currently using that. I want you to change the value of the assigned circle size so the circle takes up the entire screen. So right now, it's not taking up the entire screen, what could you put in for a value to make up the entire screen? Sure, 600 will work. Could you do 6,000? Yeah, that's a, that's a big circle. Okay. Okay, so here's, if you go too big with a number, then it's going to, you're taking up way too much memory. That's, that's later down the road. We'll talk more about that. Looks pretty good. Close. Got a little bit of a gap there. Looks pretty good. All right. So a couple things with variables. First is creating the variable. You'll need to know this. I'd write this information down. Here's how you create a variable. You use the keyword var, and then you put the variable name. Make sure your variable name is what's called camel case. So it should be lowercase with capital letters on each additional word. Um, and it should be, like it should be descriptive. Your variable should not just be you know, like X or Y or A or whatever. Um, assigning a value, so you'd put the variable name gets and then the value that it stores. You could do that in one step by using the uh, by initializing it. So doing var the uh, name gets and then the value all in one line of code, and that's typically how you see it. You typically, when you create a variable, you initialize it. You give it an initial value um, to start with. So let's look at this here. Has multiple errors caused by bad label names. The errors prevent the program from being viewed. So you can't have spaces in your name. So instead of size of circle, what should it be? No spaces and capitals on the O and C. And then we're going to change that down here as well. Um, can you start a variable name with a number? No. no. So you can do one dimension if you want. Uh, 
But really, is this the one dimension? No, what is this? Well, I'd call this um, X position, and I'd call this Y position. Uh, why did the Y position not work? You might notice that. Um, go into this Y position and change that to a capital Y. What happened? We got some we got some warnings. So variable names are case sensitive. So whatever you use in terms of the the lettering there, it's got to be the same here. If you run it, it should be good to go. Okay, let's look at this guy. I size is assigned a random value at the beginning. We've got a background that's green. We got a yellow face, and then we have a black eye that's going to change based on eye size, it looks like. And this one stays constant. And then we have a mouth. Let's run it. So one eye changes, but the other eye doesn't change at all. It says make it so that both eyes are always the same random size. So instead of 10, 10, what do we change these variables to? I heard it, I size, good. Uh, the tab key lets you um, go through each of these little blanks one at a time. So if you hit, if you're like here and you hit tab, it'll move over one at a time. Good. So in here we're going to be using camel case. <clears throat> there are other ways to do variable names using underscores and so forth, but um, lower camel case is, is what we're going to stick with on our naming. And that's the end of uh, lesson five.